Hey there everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood minifigure here, and welcome back to another LEGO review. Today we're looking at the LEGO Star Wars Imperial Light Cruiser set. The set serial number is 75315. It has 1,336 pieces. It came out in 2021, and it currently retails for 160 US dollars. <clears throat> now, let's have a look at the figures of the set first. Here's the Dark Trooper. There's the front of him. There's the back. Uh, and that is just what his head looks like without the mask. So it's another type of Kylo Ren figure where, where it has face print printing identical to, to the mask here. <coughs> Pull this off. Oh yeah, there's also some back printing here on the head, so that's cool. And there's a better look at the back printing of the actual figure torso. Next up, we have the title character himself, Mando. And he's got his rifle and his Beskar spear. There's the side of him. There's the back. There's what his back looks like. And there's the other side. There is still no face for Din Djarin, even though we have seen his face a couple times in the series and we know him what it looks like. So it is a bit saddening that he still doesn't have an, of, an, an official face printing yet. <clears throat> next up we have the uh, <clears throat> next up we have the former New Republic Ranger, Kara Dune. There's the back of her. And there's an alternate facial expression back there. <clears throat> Next up we have Fennec Shand. There's the side of her, there's the back, there's the other side, and there's her face, and there's an alternate facial expression there. I do wish we had gotten a, an, alternative, an alternative hair piece for Fennec, so that she has hair when she takes her mask off. Then finally, we have Moth <laughs> Gideon. Here he is with Grogu and his dark saber. So there's the front of him. There's the back. And there is, of course, a secondary facial expression for him as well. And here we have Grogu, the baby of the Yoda species. So that was all of the figures, and now it is time to look at the actual set, which unfortunately is way bigger than my than my custom-built recording studio right here. So, uh, uh, you know, let's try and do it like this. So here's the front of it. Uh, here's the side. Uh, here is the back of it. Whoop. 
and use the other side. Now starting from the back, on both sides here you have little, little loading docks, with each of which contain a micro TIE fighter. Oh, wait. Here's what the TIE Fighter looks like. And as you can see, there's just a single stud there, single studded piece back here, which you can attach the TIE Fighter to. Sorry folks, we're having a bit of technical difficulties. Come on. Uh. Alright. Uh, finally. There. And of course you have the same thing on the um <laughs> the other side here. Yep, another TIE fighter right here. It is a bit difficult to get these things back into the loading dock once you get them out. Alright, there we are. Now, over here at the sides, you have two you have two side guns here which can be moved up and down. Likewise, the same goes for the other side. You can move both of them up and down. And then, up at the top, you've got two rotating turrets. Both of which have, both of which have adjustable cannons, or adjustable, uh, well, yeah, I guess cannons really, yeah which can be moved up and down, and each have two spring-loaded shooters on them. And we know how those work, you just push down, and they fly out. Yep, just like that. Then, over here at the front, this whole, this whole thing lifts up. And there is a really spacious area inside. Let me real quick just. Yeah, you have enough space to put all five figures in here. Like. Yep, there's enough space for all five of them in there. Alright, cool. Now, since I've shown you that... Of course, this is meant to represent the main command center area of the ship, which would really be up here at this part. But yeah, we have we have a large table here with a coffee mug, <coughs> yeah, with a red coffee mug in it, and you have two you have two slow pieces with control panel stickers on them, and you have two compartment boxes here. This one holds. This one holds a pair, pair of uh, um, binoculars. And... Put 
the second one contains a single bond. And up towards the front here, you have two more pieces which represent control panels of some sorts. Uh, gonna be hard for me to get a good view here. Yeah. And you too. Yeah. And you do have the exact same piece here on the other side of it. And you also have a single clip back here which holds one single extra spring, spring loaded rocket. Just in case you happen to lose any of the four up here while playing with them. And then here, up at the front, there's a big button which you can push forward. And what that's meant to do is you are meant to take the TIE Fighters from the sides, put them right here on this, put them right here in this area, and then push this thing forward to launch them out. So yeah, so yeah, that does it for about all of the features of the Imperial Light Cruiser. Uh, the <coughs> this, in my opinion, is a pretty good Star Wars set. Uh, it it is a bit overpriced uh, for a hundred and sixty dollars for for thirteen hundred pieces. Uh, <coughs> It has decent play value to it. There's a bunch of space. There's a bunch of like interior space here. You have places to store Tie Fighters and another space to launch them out of. Although still, this set is not really worth a hundred sixty dollars. But the price isn't as bad as it could be, but it should still be lower. And. <coughs> And of course, um, another and another minor thing about this set is that you have is that you have to be careful when you're loading the Tie Fighters uh, um, into the sides. <laughs> you have to be sure that that these pieces are are completely parallel, and also like they're parallel to each other and parallel to the to the ground as well. <laughs> Because otherwise, you're going to have a hard time getting getting them back in there. Uh, you also you, know, you also have to do a bit of like lining it up with the stud there. There is also a, a bit of blue pins that show here, like right there, <laughs> which and the. <coughs> so, which of course um, that doesn't really ruin the look that much, but it is a bit, <clears throat> but it isn't very good to look at. I also sometimes this set can break apart when you're handling with it, so be careful. That's another downside. And of course, I think the one thing that most fans don't like about this set, the dark saber, which in my opinion, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, do it doesn't look that good. <clears throat> what? <laughs> um, you could take a black version of a blade piece like this, <clears throat> and, uh, <clears throat> cut off the handle part way, and stick it on there, and, and, and that would pro that would probably make a better looking dark saber than, than this single black rod piece that's used for every other <laughs> lightsaber in in the Lego Star Wars line. So. <clears throat> <laughs> but um, other than, than that, this uh, this is still a pretty good set <clears throat> um, overall. It looks very nice and detailed. I know 
I know that some LEGO Star Wars collectors would definitely want to buy this to add to the Imperial Armada that they're building. <laughs> and it all and it also has a decent figure <laughs> and it also has a a decent figure lineup as well with, <clears throat> with Cara Dune, Fennec Shan, Mando and Moff Gideon and and even a dark trooper. <laughs> so uh yeah, that was my review of the Lego Star Wars Imperial Light Cruiser set. I hope you liked that review, and if you did, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and ring the notification bell for new videos. Thank you, bye!